Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we will discuss about pleural effusion. You may be knowing that pleural effusion, pleura means there is a covering uh, uh, which covers the lung. The, this covering is called as pleura. Pleura has two uh, layers, parietal and visceral pleura. There will be some amount of fluid, around 15 ml to 30 ml fluid in this pleural cavity. This is to prevent friction. But there are some conditions which can increase this fluid. The pleural fluid can be increased more than the normal. This is called as pleural effusion. Okay. We will see what are the causes for pleural effusion. It can be an infectious cause, inflammatory cause or due to some fluid overload condition. Okay, we'll see what are the cause for right-sided alone pleural effusion. Right-sided pleural effusions are classically seen in ascites patient and thoracic duct obstruction below T5 makes syndrome. These are the classical examples for right-sided pleural effusion. Left-sided pleural effusion is classically seen in pericarditis, thoracic duct obstruction above T5, pancreatitis, esophageal rupture, Dressler syndrome. Any side pleural effusion can be seen in hypothyroidism, infectious causes that is very important bacterial, viral, fungal, TB and malignancy it can produce any side pleural efficient. Bilateral pleural efficient simultaneously if you have bilateral pleural efficient you, that is commonly seen in cardiac failure, uh, liver cirrhosis, hyperproteinemia, anemia and connective tissue disorder. Sometimes you can get bilateral pleural efficient, pericardial efficient uh, and uh, perito uh, like ascites. This is called as polycirrhositis. Classically seen in uh, connective tissue disorders. Okay. Now we will see what are the clinical features of pleural efficient. If it is an infective pleural efficient, initially there may be some infl inflammation in the pleura that produces pleuritic chest pain. So one side of the chest patient will have pain and on deep inspiration, inspiration pain increases. That is called as pleuritic chest pain. When the fluid increases, the pain disappears. Patient will have some chest tightness, chest pressure on that area. Difficulty in breathing, cough are the common findings of pleural effusion. Okay. So, patient can have progressive breathlessness, cough classically seen in pleural effusion. But patients who is having tuberculosis, malignancy and can have uh, fever, weight loss, all these things. Okay. If the fluid uh, amount more than 500 ml only, they uh, develop all detectable clinical signs. Okay. Otherwise, clinical signs may not be there. Now, we will discuss about what are the clinical signs. You should understand that there is a layer of fluid which is covering the lung. So, you don't see any activity of lung in that area. So, chest movements are reduced on that area. On percussion, you get stony dullness on that area because fluid uh, covers the uh, lung and uh, normal lung resonance is uh, disappeared. So, you get a dullness on percussion and reduced breath sound on that area because la lung is covered by uh, fluid. So, on auscultation, you get reduced breath sounds. So, reduced movements, movements, reduced breath sound, percussion dullness is stony dull. Okay, these are the cl clinical findings. Okay. Now, what is the investigation which is done in uh, pleural effusion as a first choice? Chest x-ray is the first investigation, but only a lateral decubitus x-ray will reveal a minimal fluid in the uh, pleural cavity. Around 50 ml of fluid, if it develops, you put the patient on left lateral or right lateral, depending on the area where the fluid is accumulated, you may get the X-ray finding for pleural effusion. A normal X-ray PA or X-ray AP view will detect pleural effusion more than 300 ml of fluid only. So, remember more than 300 ml will give you a clinic X-ray finding of pleural effusion. More than 500 ml will give you a clinical sign of pleural effusion. But remember, in ICUs, if the patient is lying down and if you are taking an X-ray, pleural effusion will not be like a normal X-ray with pleural effusion. It will only produce ground glass haziness in the lung field. Suppose there is a right side pleural effusion, right side full will be hazy. There will not be blending of the angle. There will not be uh, efficient uh, like uh, picture in the chest X-ray. It will be throughout the lung field. It's, it will be ground glass appearance. Okay. Now, uh, once you, uh, suppose you are clinically strongly suspecting a pleural effusion, you are not seeing by x-ray, you can go for ultrasound and see what is the fluid status in the lungs. Okay. So, ultrasound is another investigation which can pick up pleural effusion in the lung. Normally, pleural effusion, uh, once you diagnose, you have to aspirate the fluid. If there is an infectious or inflammatory condition, you have to aspirate the pleural effusion. Uh, pl uh, but uh, you, uh, suppose there is a cardiac failure or liver failure, no need to aspirate. Okay. In the pleural fluid, you have to do protein, 
LDH, albumin, amylase level, glucose. So, protein, LDH, albumin and glucose is very important test. And uh, once you understand there is a uh, uh, infection uh, possibility, you have to send uh, cell count, cell type, cytology for malignancy cells, gram stain should be done, culture should be done. Other investigations like ADA is very important investigation in tuberculosis. TB, PCR can be done. Culture for various fungi, bacteria, all these things can be done. Once you uh, uh, aspirate the fluid, you have to analyze the result. Okay. So, you have two types of uh, fluids, transudative fluid and exudative fluid. Transudative fluid means there is no inflammation. Exudative fluid means there is inflammation. Okay. For this, there is a criteria called as Slides criteria. Exudative pleural effusion meet at least one of the following criteria. That is Slides criteria. See, one of the following things are positive. You, you have to think that it is an uh, exudative condition. Plural fluid protein by serum pro protein uh, ratio more than 0 0.5 is first criteria. Plural fluid LDH by serum LDH more than 0.6 is the second criteria. Plural, plural fluid LDH more than two-thirds of the normal upper limit of the serum is the third criteria. These criteria are called as lights criteria. One of the light criteria is present, then uh, there is a possibility of exudative pleural effusion. Okay. Now, we will see uh, what are the reasons for uh, exudative and transudative. Transudative, we have discussed it, there is no inflammation. It can be due to cardiac failure, it can be due to liver cirrhosis, it can be due to nephrotic syndrome, hypothyroidism or hypoproteinemia. All other conditions like infections, malignancy, collagen vascular disease, pulmonary embolism, chylothorax, Meig syndrome, esophageal rupture, pancreatitis, amiodarone induced pleural effusion, everything comes in under exudative. So, non-infectious are mainly transudative. Infectious and inflammatory conditions are exudative pleural effusion. Okay. So, there are some more investigation in that most important is adenosine DMNS. ADA level more than 40 units per liter is classically seen in tuberculosis, but it can be seen in empyema and malignancy. There also it can be positive, but ADA is classically when it correlates with uh, clinical history, you should suspect tuberculosis. Then cytology should be done, yeah, glucose should be done. Many bacterial infection glucose can be reduced, but mostly viral infection glucose can be normal. Okay. Now we have discussed about pleural effusion. Pleural effusion is the collection of uh, uh, fluid in the pleural cavity. And normally we have two types of pleural effusion transudative and exudative. Exudative means there is some inflammation or infection. Okay. So, you have uh, you have clinical findings only if there is flu flu fluid level more than 500 ml uh, in the pleural cavity. Uh, you can get an x-ray finding if the pleural uh, fluid is more than 300 ml. Uh, you, once you diagnose an exudative pleural effusion, you have to aspirate you have to use lights criteria to diagnose exudative and transudative depending on the uh, clinical condition like uh, uh, primary pathology you have to treat the pleural effusion i am just explaining one of uh, one of the x ray findings in pleural effusion normally when you have uh, an chest x ray pa view bilateral uh, cardiophrenic angle or costophrenic angles are very sharp they are not blended but if there is a fluid in the uh, pleura, you can see blending of angle. Uh, now you can see this X-ray right sided, there is a blending in the X-ray, chest X-ray, right sided, uh, costophrenic angle, there is a blending. But if the pleural effusion is massive, it, you may not see this blending, but whole diaphragm, uh, uh, it looks like whole diaphragm is elevated on the right side. And you can see some uh, infiltrates above the uh, pleural effusion, they are pneumonias. Mostly it is pneumonia. This is called as syn pneumonic effusion. Subscribe to ADCM Emergency Medicine on YouTube. Press the bell icon.